this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog, and welcome to Season 5, where we are going to be looking into the first episode, which features the one and only Gene Kelly. Now, for those of you who are a bit unfamiliar with Gene Kelly, he is actually known to be one of the master actors of musicals during the golden age of Hollywood, where he would appear in numerous of movie musicals like For Me and My Gal, Thousand Cheers, The Three Musketeers, On the Town, An American in Paris, Anchors Away, which he actually got an Oscar nomination for, and especially his highlight role, his magnum opus performance, is singing in the rain but on top of being an actor he is also a singer a dancer a choreographer a producer and even a director where his most notable film that he directed was actually hello dolly and on top of that he has actually gathered numerous of awards not just that oscar nomination for anchors away but he has also gotten uh, an Oscar nomination for Best Picture for what he did with Hello Dolly and numerous of Lifetime Achievement Awards coming from the Kennedy Center of Honors. He got the Cecil B. DeMille Award at the Golden Globes um, and also got recognized at the Screen Actors Guild and the American Institute. And on top of that, the AFI has actually done a top uh, 100 or a top list of the greatest male stars and, oh, well, the greatest male stars of classic Hollywood, and he was actually ranked in 15th place. Like, that's actually pretty amazing. Now, going into the episode that Gene Kelly has actually appeared in, it was honestly quite interesting, per se, because, like, even though it is pretty predictable, like, it still actually came out pretty good. Like, on paper, it's not really that convincing that it might turn out good, but in execution, it was pretty enjoyable, and I highly appreciate what I saw, because the whole situation, like what's going on backstage, is that Gene Kelly just wants to be there to watch the show. Like, he never planned anything to be uh, a special guest star or to even perform any of the songs that he is known for. Like, he just wants to sit there in the back and just enjoy the show throughout the whole time so Kermit's big dilemma is to really try to find a way either to fill in the space of what's supposed to be Gene Kelly but instead is replaced by another weird performance by a random Muppet or find a way to trick Gene Kelly into going on stage but uh, what is actually very interesting with that is that yeah there are a few times when Gene Kelly actually did do a bit of a performance but not all the time like uh, you do see Gene Kelly a lot in this episode, but you don't necessarily see him performing or actually singing or doing a, an actual legit stage production on The Muppet Show or anything like that, really. He's just mostly there to watch and, like, the episode itself is a little bit committed, but actually did manage to try to slide in a few of his performances. Like, um, one big one was actually when they did a bit of a tribute to his performance in Anchors Away, where Gene Kelly wanted to teach uh, teach Kermit how to do a little bit of a dance. And it's very reminiscent, again, to Anchors Away, where Gene Kelly would go and uh, teach Jerry how to dance. Yes, and by the way, it's Jerry from uh, Tom and Jerry. If you haven't seen that clip from Anchors Away, you should look it up. It's actually really amazing how they blend uh, the hand-drawn animation of Jerry with Gene Kelly's dancing performance. It's actually really, really good. Uh, but going back into the episode that... Uh, the, well, going back into the episode itself with Kermit and Gene Kelly, it was actually really cool how they did it because, like, you see Kermit full body just dancing, on, like, on a piano to learn the dance moves of Gene Kelly. This is not the first time that you see Kermit in his full body where you see him dancing around, but it is still pretty cool to see, and, like, the technicality of the puppetry that they've done on Kermit is actually uh, really, really nice. And then there is also another uh, performance that Gene Kelly did, not necessarily on the stage, but it's more like a, a backstage song that he just wanted to sing to Miss Piggy, which is You Wonderful You, which is a nice performance, uh, but also has a, a funny twist at the end where Miss Piggy is supposed to prepare herself for Pigs in Space, and then Gonzo decided to fill in the void. That's actually pretty funny. Uh, and then at the end, 
Now, uh, the big thing with the ending is that you really know what's coming. Like, you do expect that Gene Kelly is a, is eventually gonna break and suddenly he's gonna go on stage and actually sing a big performance or have a grand finale for this episode. That's honestly one of the flaws uh, from this is that you know what's coming plot-wise. You know that, like, with all the times that Gene Kelly j is just saying, is like, nope, I'm just going to sit here and watch. Like, that just feels like a massive wink to the audience saying that, yeah, you know what's coming. You know Gene Kelly is going to do this amazing big number. And what they have done is actually a pretty clever melody because, uh, or medley per se, uh, like, what, what they wanted to do was that Kermit really wanted Gene Kelly to go sing Singin' in the Rain, which is probably Gene Kelly's most popular song, but he flat out refused. Like, he just wanted to say no because after Singin' in the Rain, the dude has performed that so many godforsaken times that he started to grow a bit tired of it. And um, what, what they decided to do is that Rolf wanted to try to convince Gene Kelly in doing so, so what, what he did was that he started out with the little overtures like But every time he would do that Gene Kelly would actually sing a different song pretty much showing that that little tune at the beginning is really associated with so many of them But of course at the end Gene Kelly would actually sing uh, a little bit of singing in the rain And it is actually very sweet and it is very nice and that's pretty much what I mean by conceptually, it doesn't sound all that great, but execution-wise, it's definitely fantastic. Because, um, like, you know what's coming. You know that eventually Gene Kelly will be singing sin singing in the rain. But when it happens, it's definitely nice. You do, Like, it gives you a soft spot in your heart, you know? It makes it feel good and it definitely is a lot of fun. But, at the same time, this is not the only plot that's happening at the same time. There is also another side plot which focuses more on Beauregard where Scooter was just fiddling around with uh, tarot cards and he was just reading them uh, saying uh, like and ending up saying that it's gonna be the end of the world which Beauregard is freaking out and he totally believes in. So he's pretty much warning everybody that it's going to be the end of the world where um, like you see, you see it be associated in sketches like Veterinarian's Hospital and also Pigs in Space. And the one thing I gotta say about those two sketches that's actually really cool is that they really made a character of the announcer because beforehand in the previous seasons, all he was was just an announcer, always saying uh, time once again for another Veterinarian's Hospital or just saying and now Pigs in Space. But in here, he actually does play a bit of a vital role where, like, you actually see the physical presence of uh, the announcer and he actually does interact a bit with, uh, the, with uh, the pigs in Pigs in Space. I'm not saying that it is the first time that they would do something like this, but uh, this is actually one of, the f one of the first times where he's actually... Uh, like recognized as an actual character instead of just being an announcer or just a bit of a vehicle for either Dr. Bob or Link Hogthrob or Miss Piggy to just use as like an excuse to break the fourth wall within the sketch per se. You, you know, it's honestly actually a pretty cool bit. Now there are a few other sketches as well, but they're honestly really short. Like, for example, there was uh, Fit as a Fiddle with two singing dogs, and then there's also Cool Water, which just happened so quick, and honestly, that's pretty much it. Now, considering that this is a brand new series of The Muppet Show, um, you might be wondering, is there a significant difference between the previous seasons, or like, jumping from season 4 to season 5? And may I say right now, absolutely yes, there is a huge difference. In fact, the changes that they have done here is much more bigger than any other season that happened. Now, first and foremost is actually the cold opening, whenever the show would start, like before the actual intro. 
uh, beforehand, it was always Scooter knocking on the door and always saying like, Oh, special guest star, special guest star, 50 seconds to curtain special guest star, you know, always doing that and then follows with uh, a little bit. But this time around, it's a, it's actually quite different. Where they where the special guest star would actually enter through the uh, actual entrance from backstage and they are greeted to a new Muppet character named Pops, which is pretty much, uh, he, he's more the receptionist in the back. So that's mostly Pops's uh, shtick throughout the entire season is that he's just the old receptionist in, uh, you know, in the back. But it's not, but I can guarantee you right now, like remembering back when I was watching the show back as a kid, like, this is not going to be a character like Gladys or Annie Sue where they're just, or even uh, George or Mildred, that they're just going to drop after a few episodes. Like, Pops is going to be there, like, all the time. He's going to be there in every cold opening. This is the new way that they're going to do it. And on top of that, there is also a new change onto the intro itself, where beforehand in Season 4, it was very short. Like, they, they really did cut a lot of segments, but in here, this is the entire full song. This is the most full that you can get than any other season, actually. And in here, this is the version where you actually do hear the full lyrics more than just, uh, like, it, it's time to play the music, it's time to light the lights. You actually do also get Statler and Waldorf's bit. Uh, which is another big thing, is that Statler and Waldorf would actually sing in uh, the intro instead of just uh, cracking a different joke from episode to episode. And if you guys don't know what I mean, this is actually the version that OK Go would actually use for their cover of The Muppet Show. So that's basically the whole thing that you would get with this episode, uh, with uh, the intro. So this is the more full one that you end up getting. And also, another big difference is actually the closing number. It's a little bit of the same thing, but you do notice that um, they did refilm it for this season in particular, but the newest edition would have to be uh, what could be considered the newest member of uh, the Electric Mayhem, which is Lips, who he is a trumpet player. And at the end, you actually do hear like, uh, the trumpet segment very, pro uh, very prominently. Now, in the previous seasons, yes, you do see a trumpet player, uh, playing among the orchestra, but Lips is the one that is very prominent, and you'll see in the later episodes, he's going to be a lot more prominent, especially with the Electric Mayhem. So, yeah, there definitely is, uh, a major change in the normal setup that they provided, like, in the opening numbers, and in the closing numbers, or or actually in the intro and in the credits. So yeah, there is definitely a major change. But going back to the episode itself, overall, I would definitely say that it is actually legitimately good. Now, there are a lot of things that you could tell that it is quite predictable, and the plot line with Beauregard, it's a little bit of a hit and miss in terms of the jokes when they try to make it a little bit more of a comical episode, but it is actually very sweet. Like, uh, I actually did come out smiling after this episode, and that is definitely thanks to the great performance of Gene Kelly. Um, like, like I previously stated, his plot line, it's easily predictable. You know that he's going to do a big performance at the end, but when it does come and when you see Gene Kelly perform, it's definitely fantastic. I truly like it. And honestly, if you are a fan of the golden age of Hollywood, if you're a fan of movies like Singing in the Rain, or if you are familiar with the works of Gene Kelly, then this is definitely an episode that would be worth watching. But anyways, that is pretty much it with this episode on the Muppet Vlog, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And so far, now that we have entered onto Season 5, let's see what the other episodes will provide for us. But we will only know until next time, so see you later, dudes! Thank you.